Hey everybody, welcome back. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I have purchased a new welder because my old welder, which I bought probably 25 or 30 years ago from Mac Tools, is a MIG welder only and requires gas. There is no easy way to convert it to flux. I have tried. You really need to reverse the polarity. And to do it on that one would be a bit too sketchy even for me. And I've gotten 30 years of hard use out of that. You know, not everyday use like it was in a shop, but from a guy at home who used it fairly often. And I'm, I'm happy with the fact that we're now replacing it. So what I have here is the Vivor brand. And if you guys are familiar with Vivor from watching my channel, I have a couple of their things I've bought. And I've never been 100% happy with them. But they do make solid stuff even though sometimes it seems like it's not 100% ready for prime time, they do make solid stuff at a ridiculously low price. That um, so-called 10 liter ultrasonic cleaner I bought is Vivor, and it works really good, but in, in nobody's drug dream does that thing hold 10 liters of liquid. I don't know where they got that number from, but you know, it, it, ain't anything, it ain't from any method I'm familiar with. But I'm gonna give them another shot because this was really inexpensive. This welder is 130 amp. This is their 130A welder. And I'll pop here in, I'll pop a picture of the listing and, and show you what claims it makes. Okay, so just a quick look at it online where I ordered it. This is, of course, Walmart. And this is what I ordered, 125 bucks. Um, Amazon also has it over here for a little bit more money, actually quite a bit more, 159. But um, it's the same thing. Uh, 130 amp welding machine, three in one combo, MMA, which is stick welding, MIG and lift TIG. Flux core welding mostly since there is no way to run gas in through the machine. Uh, the TIG welder, you hook the torch directly up to the to the hose that goes to the the welder it comes right out of the regulator to it this is also a dc only machine so if you're trying to weld tig weld aluminum this may not be your best choice while it is possible to to dc weld tig weld aluminum it's not the best way probably to do it so um this is what it shows what it comes with i'm i'll be really surprised if it actually comes with the stick welding stinger and the tig torch um Fillet welding, joint welding, spot welding, yeah, we know all that. One, one kilogram welding wire included in the package. Uh, it's an IGBT inverter device. High efficiency, increased duty cycle, less thermal loss. It has a digital display, a function switching button on the front, and a current wire speed control knob. Well, it will control wire speed when you're, um, when you're using the MIG welder. I'm not going to read all this to you. I'll let you guys, if you want to pause it and read it, that's up to you. But you notice under package content, it says welding machine brush, slag hammer, welding glasses, welding wire, copper ground wire, copper welding wire, and shielded gas welding gun. So I'm not really sure what all of that is, but I guess we'll find out when we open the package. Like I say, for 125 bucks, I'll be shocked if it comes with the TIG torch and the um stick welding stinger lead it might i'd just be surprised for that price if it does anyway that's it i'll put links below if um it's an amazon link it'll be an affiliate link I, if it's a walmart link i don't know that i have a walmart affiliate account so it may or may not be anyway let's get a look at it but this is an igbt and that stands for insulated gate bipolar transistor and i can't believe i remembered that if you guys know what that means more power to you i really don't but for our purposes it means it's very small light and reliable compared to something like my old welder which was transformer powered thing the thing isn't that big but it weighs about 50 pounds anyway Let's get this thing out of the box. They um, make some claims about it. We're going to test them out. I have some sacrificial metal here to weld, and I'm going to weld those holes on the inner fender well on my Jeep up with it, hopefully in this video. But let's start by getting it out of the box. Now, one thing, I don't know if I added it into the little blurb, the picture of this shows that it comes with 
Well, they don't, they show in the picture of it both the MIG torch, a stick welding, you know, handle, and a TIG torch. And I don't think it comes with the TIG torch or the stick. I think they put it in there just because they say this is what it can do. And you know, maybe it can. Right now, all I really need is the MIG torch. I can't imagine they could sell a welder for $125. And this was $125, and I spent my own money on it. I can't imagine for that price it comes with a TIG torch and a, a stick welder. And But we're going to find out right now, and I think I see a TIG torch right off the bat. Holy cow, that is a TIG torch. That is a TIG torch and TIG ends. I be dipped. Let's count. I hope there's a MIG torch in there now. I can't believe that this comes with a TIG torch. I mean, I'll be very happy if it does. I might take back, well, not every bad thing I've said about Vivor. I might take back some of the things I've said about Vivor. There's some consumables for the TIG torch. And yes, that is a TIG torch. Did I mention I'll be dipped? Because I'll be dipped. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. But there it is. So I'm going to put that back in the bag. I am both pleased and shocked. Vivor, you have partially redeemed yourself in my eyes. What's this? A little zippered container. What could be in here? Oh, look, they got some little welding glasses with it. I wonder what, um, <laughs> these are just utterly useless. Well, they're especially utterly useless for me because I wear prescription glasses. Oh, and those are dark. Those are like, got to be a number 10. Those are dark. I was going to say they might be nice for the plasma cutter, assuming, you know, you didn't wear, um, you didn't wear prescription glasses like I do, but they're utterly worthless for me. Ah. I don't care since I'm not going to be using them. Get in there. Okay, let's get the rest of this out of here. Oh gosh, I hope there's a TIG torch. I hope there's a MIG torch in there. Here's another box. Well, that's a heavy little box. Oh, that's going to be wire. If it doesn't have a MIG torch, I'm going to be pretty unhappy. Yeah, this is a roll of wire. So if it comes with a roll of wire, one would think it would have to come with a MIG torch, right? Yeah, that's a little roll of wire. Probably enough to last me a year. <laughs> it's my current amount. 0.8 millimeter. Okay, that's wire. Great. I'm just still shocked that it comes with a, with a TIG torch. I don't have any use for TIG right at the moment, but it is a capability I would like to have. Let's get this out of here. Oh, cry, it doesn't weigh, it doesn't weigh anything. That's amazing. Let's see what else we have in the box. And then we'll take, oh my god, there's a stick. Look at that. It comes with the, the stick welder attachment. I haven't welded with stick for many, many years. But I used to do a lot of welding in the wet, in the dirt, in the sand, in the mud. And I loved welding with 6011. Because I could burn through and weld anything with 6011. So, um, yeah, that makes me really happy. Vivor! I love you all of a sudden. I can't believe it. I don't think there's a MIG. I don't think there's a MIG gun in here. There's not. They couldn't have hidden it in here anywhere, could they have? Let's take a look inside. Oh! <laughs> okay. I take, Vivar, I take back half of the bad things I just said about you. Oh, I'm, I'm reserving the other half. Here is the MIG jammed in the side. Okay. <laughs> so this has been an honest unboxing because I have surprised myself on multiple occasions. Okay, that's a nice little MIG handle. I'm not unhappy with that. Here is where obviously our wire goes. Here is the tensioning roller. Uh, one thing I have discovered with flux core wire is you do not want a tight tension on the wire 
since it's flux core on the inside, you'll just crush it. So um, you got to maintain a pretty light pressure, not like we used to with um, with MIG. Man, look how tiny this thing is. The stick is the stick is kind of lightweight, but you know what? This is a 130 amp device. Let's see about how long it is. Um, I got long arms, so we'll use my arms to measure. Here's one end from tip to nose, three feet, three feet or whatever the hell that is. So basically we have six feet of stick welding lead. That MIG, that um, TIG torch, I can't believe this thing comes with a TIG torch. That's just, for 125 bucks. I, I, honestly, and it's long too. Let's see what we got with it here. That's three, six, nine. This bloody thing has 12 feet of, of TIG lead. That's, I can't believe it. Honestly, I can't believe it. The MIG, the MIG looks like it's six feet, but this TIG torch is huge. How do you just stunned and amazed? It comes with no electrodes. It looks like, but that's okay. We have a um, a little package of consumables. I don't see any electrodes. I'm not worried about that. Um, I have no gas to run with it anyway, so I'm not even slightly worried about electrodes at the moment. It's got a nice heavy ground lead. Of course, it's the um, yeah, that's a halfway decent ground lead. I was expecting something more like along you know the lines of a jumper cable, car jumper cable end. But it actually has a decent looking ground lead. Let me unravel it here. Show it to you. It's actually got a decent looking actual welding style ground lead rather than a jumper cable style lead, which which is great for jump cables, you know, connecting to a battery terminal, but really doesn't work good connecting to um to sides of metal and things like that for welding purposes. All right, how long is our electrical lead? Um, three foot. It's about six foot two. Our power cord is about six feet. Our MIG lead is also going to be yeah, it's probably six feet two. I'll let you Euro guys do your translation to, um, to metric, but yeah, it's about six feet. Looks like it pulls right off. I don't want to break it right off the bat. It's got a, it's got a tip in it. I'm sure it's the wrong, I'm sure it's the right one. Well, I'm, so far I'm impressed. So, this can MIG, TIG, and MMA, which I haven't even looked up yet, so I don't know what it is. But um, it has power, DC, SIN MIG. It's got a bunch of little icons, which I think are basically warning you not to kill yourself or blind yourself with it. We have an amperage scale and a voltage scale. Okay, let's plug it in. Let's put a ground lead in it. So we've seen what's in the box. Let's just make sure it turns on, and we're going to plug this for um, for flux core. I want the ground lead, and this is how you reverse the polarity. You simply change the ground lead from minus to positive. So nice little dense connectors. I can't believe it. Let's plug it in. Let's make sure it powers on, and um, we will get it loaded with wire, and we will do some testing. Power button, where did they put it? In the back? Of course. Oh, it's even got a fan. Look at that. It's even got a fan. I had to add a fan into my other one. All right, here we go. Power's on, the fan runs. Amperage goes on the on the readout, amperage goes from a low of 17 to a high of 130. Noisy little fan, and of course voltage is in this case volt for me voltage is probably just going to be wire speed. 
you set the MIG. Wonder how you change that. Probably by changing the torch. I wonder if you change the torch if it'll automatically switch from MIG to TIG. TIG and lift. And there's two ways you can TIG. I used to do a fair amount of TIG welding in my younger days. I worked for, let me switch that off. We don't need to listen to that. Okay, it didn't turn off. Oh, there it goes. Probably runs a little bit to get it cool. Um, in my younger days, I did a fair amount of TIG welding. I worked for a company that made parts for Kenworth trucks out of the um, diamond plate aluminum step sides and bumpers and other stuff. And I used to be one of the guys who'd weld them up. Not my favorite job at that company. I much preferred fitting over, over welding because you got to move around. Man, sitting at that bench all day welding up Kenworth step sides. Talk about boring, and then, man, hard to get up at the end of the day. Let's get that off. Let's get the wire out and get the wire on. So I'm excited. I mean, I got far more than I expected to for my 125 bucks. Now, if it will only weld, that's all we need to hope for now. And you can run this as a standard MIG with gas if you want, just by changing the polarity and putting yourself a standard MIG wire, a MIG wire into it. Now I doubt this thing will run 0.8 solid MIG wire. You'll have to um, probably get a different, a different liner of the correct size or else it won't feed good. Alright, there we go. Pop that back on. Let's pop this back on and let's see if it feeds wire. Oh look, that's a little button. You can change it. There's a little button right here. You can change it from MMA to MIG to MIG. MIG.8 to MIG.1 and then TIG lift. All right, I'm on MIG.8, which is where it should be. Okay, I lost a big chunk of footage. I'm used to when you pull the trigger on the MIG, hearing a big clunk of a solenoid going, and then the electric feed motor going, rawr, rawr, rawr. I'm used to that. This doesn't do that. This thing is stupid quiet, plus the fan is loud. But let's switch it on. And I'll show you. So here it is. And here's the gun. And... That's all the noise it makes. I mean, it is literally almost silent when you pull the trigger. There is no noise at all. None. I mean, you almost have to have your ear against it with the fan running in order to, um, in order to hear it turning. Or you have to be welding. Where'd my snips go? There they are. So let's snip that bit of wire off. I did a couple of, of quick welds, which again I also lost trying to set my machine. These welds here are from my old machine trying to get it to run flux core wire and you can see all the spatter. These are the new ones from the new machine just trying to um, figure out the settings on it. I'm not sure they're dialed in yet. I'm going to set... This is pretty thin material. I'm guessing this is probably, I don't know, 16 gauge, maybe 14. I'm going to set the, um, the amperage at 50 and I'm going to turn the voltage way down and we'll see if we can't get a couple welds to, to dial the voltage in a little bit better and maybe get the amperage set and wire speed set. Wire speed is going to go along with your amperage and your heat is going to go along with your voltage. So let's give this a, another shot. That's a good clamp. Damn. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Let's see if I can't get a um, decent first practice weld. I'm obviously eventually going to have to move this to some place where I don't have wood underneath. You know what? Let's put something metal under there just, just in case. I do need to build a small welding table, but that'll do for right now. And let's see if I can't get this dialed in a little better. 
So I've got the amperage set at 50 and I've got the voltage turned down quite a bit because I want to just kind of bring the voltage up to where my amperage is at 50. 50 may be too low for this. I don't know. We'll try it. And I'm going the wrong way. I need to drag this nut. Push it. That's actually not too bad. I think the amperage, I think the voltage could actually go down a little bit more. Let's try it. Well, the right way this time. Not bad at all. I hope my head wasn't over top of that, but it probably was. Let's move. Let's try again. I'd like to not I'd like to not have my head over this. Let me try holding my head the other way. Yeah, somebody definitely needs a little bit of practice, without a doubt, and get the machine settings correct. And um, I think this is a bit too thin, but here's a piece that looks like 10 gauge. Let's give that piece a shot. Here's my brother in action again. I don't know whether he was EDMing that or that was on the little mill. Probably EDM. I think that's quiet enough heat. I think the bolts need to go up a bit for that. Yeah, I need my voltage. I need my voltage a little higher for that. Let's turn the bolts up just slightly. That was probably way too much. That's much better. That's actually quite good. That sounded good and that felt good and it looked good. That's much better. So yeah, I got a bit of practicing to do with this, I think, to get figure out how the settings all work on it. And um, kind of remember how to do this myself, get the correct angle for the gun. And I just, a lot of this, I think, is mostly just me. I think the machine runs really smoothly. So I'm going to practice for a bit. Okay, so I got some pieces of material cut. Um, this is... This is um, eighth inch angle iron. And if you're wondering why I cut such small pieces, one, I'm cheap, and two, I was more thinking about how the plasma cutter was going to cut it than I actually was welding it back together again. So I got some small, uh, what is that, one by one, or probably one and a half by one, yeah, one by one, eighth inch angle. And I got some quarter by one flat bar. And if you're wondering how the little 40 amp cut 40 
plasma cutter cut that here. I left one of them, I sanded them down in the grinder, but this one I didn't do. And there you go, it cut through it without a problem. I have not, I have not sanded or ground on that at all, and that was freehand, which is why it's so rough looking. But um, yeah, it shouldn't really cut quarter inch, but it did anyway without an issue. Don't think I'd go any thicker than that, but it can certainly do quarter. Also, my overhead camera arm broke, so um, I'm on the tripod. Oh, and look what I found on the bottom of my welding cart. I found an unopened package of 332nd 6013 rod. This is probably 20 years old at least, but um, yeah, I'll be able to try the stick welder out. So that'll be fun. Okay, okay, so I've just set the dials on the machine to the halfway point for a start. That is 66 amps on the amp and wire speed and the voltage, whatever halfway it is, and let's try a quick butt weld. So a little cold starting out. Well, a little cold starting out. It ended nice, but a little cold starting out. So just as I thought, I'm going to turn my machine up. I'm going to go up to 80. Actually, it says 79. And I'm going to run the voltage to match. Sorry if you can't see this. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm having a tough time seeing the weld. Look what I did. I went way off crooked. I don't know if that's my lens. I'm going to pause and clean the lens on this helmet. Okay, that helped a lot. On the right side, I meant. Much better. Much better. That was much better. It's not pretty, but for making a bracket or something like that, that's perfectly acceptable to me as far as the appearance is concerned. Little, yeah, a little slower at the beginning, I think, would have helped. Let's try a, um, let's try a weld something along like this. Let me tack that. Tacked. Let's weld this. Well, that feels really nice. That feels really nice. That really does. That sounded nice and it felt nice. Alright, is that focusing? Alright, I am very pleased with that. Very, very pleased with that. Let's bust it and see how strong it is. Because that's the real test, is what's it look like when you break it? And can I break it? Not gonna, not gonna break easily, that's for sure. Alright, I did break it. Let's see what it looks like inside. I got pretty decent penetration, nothing fabulous. But um, you know what, for a bracket, that would have been just fine. Could have been a little hotter, I think. but. Um, Could have been a little hotter, especially at the beginning. Yeah, I'm, I'm not unhappy with that. Not at all. I'm going to try this other side of this butt weld again, just because I can. Then I'm going to try the quarter inch.
tried going a little crooked there when I caught myself. Look, that's not that great, but I'll tell you what, for a, a, a welder that I've only run a few beads on, that I have not yet really dialed in, I can see that in this, who knows what this wire is actually like. Who knows how well, how good that weld might look with Lincoln or Hobart wire. Let's try the quarter inch. And you know what? I'm the weakest link in this and we all know it. Let's take a couple of these quarter inch pieces and try a butt weld. I'll leave a little bit of a gap. We know this thing doesn't doesn't get hot enough to weld quarter inch and I didn't get the gap I wanted but that's okay let's try it all right she's tacked let's weld that what should I weld the other side let's weld the other side yeah I didn't get a gap at all there oh well worse things have happened I can't see that at all. I see where I'm at now. Alright, that's pretty hot. I can't see that at all. But that is pretty hot. Let's um... Now you can see that got pretty hot there right at the end. I really couldn't see it at all for some reason. Let's bust it and see how much penetration we got. Well, it's going to take some effort to bust it. Jesus. Alright, it's hammer time. Honestly, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> I thought it was going to break pretty easy. You know, with a little bit of a gap there or a little bit of a bevel, I think that would have been really good. Let's, um, where'd that piece go? Let's try a fillet on it. Man, that seemed like that welded that nicely. Okay, there we go, that broke it. I didn't get much penetration there. Honestly, if I was... I don't think I'd use this for anything structural that was quarter inch unless I was grinding out large bevels or able to weld both sides. Uh, yeah, I think I think probably eighth and even three sixteenths is going to be its maximum. Let's try the stick welder. Now that I found some some rod, let's try it. I'm going to run it DC positive, straight polarity. So I'm going to switch my clamp to negative, and I'm going to put my stinger in positive because that's just the way that I'm used to running this. We're going to switch the machine, the little button on the front, let me show you. We're going to tap that little button until our setting here, well over here, I'm sorry, goes to MMA, which is the top light. So we're on MIG now, MIG, we're on MIG.8, there's MIG. What is that? MIG 1.0, now we're on TIG, and now we're on MMA, and our little light up here shows power. That's all it shows. Okay, so, let me get one of those rods out. And like I say, these rods are very old, but the package is unopened. 6013 on quarter inch, or excuse me, on eighth inch. Um, 
I don't know what the voltage, I don't think the voltage is going to, I don't know. You know what? I just don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to go to 80 on the amperage. I would assume, I don't know, I shouldn't assume anything. I'm just going to set the, the amperage to, to 80 and I'm going to put the voltage about in the same position. I don't know what does what running stick. I really don't. Okay, that might actually be too hot for 8th inch. Oh crap, I didn't reposition the camera, did I? Well darn, we'll have to do it again, won't we? Sorry about that. Anyway, here's what I just welded with the stick. And um, that was just a bit too hot, I think, for 8th inch. So I'm going to try the other piece, and I'm going to turn it down a bit. Let's try it again. I was going to turn it down, wasn't I? Let's go from 80 to 69. Didn't try to do that, it just did it for me. Let's try 70 amps and let's see what happens. Come on, baby. I'm dragging up. I'm dragging and I should be pushing. Oh well. Remember, I am really rusty welding. I am not... I used to be an everyday welder but I am not anymore but um, I'm not unhappy with that for 25 year old rod and um, a brand new machine I don't even really know how to set perfectly yet that's I, I find that good enough honestly I do I'm, I'm really surprised so um, let's do one other thing I didn't do I did it the other day but I didn't get it on camera and that's um. Let's weld up some of these holes just for practice welding holes. And what I was doing, see if I can find a way to get this on camera better. I was just holding that that um, copper block behind it and just tagging it. So let's get the um, stick welder out and let's go back to um, reverse polarity. I'm actually impressed. I mean, I don't take back everything bad I've said about Vivor, but I'm seriously consider retracting some of it. I honestly, if they would provide a, a settings chart and a decent manual, I, I might recommend this for everybody. But they don't. And we're going to put the ground clamp in the positive, and we are going to put the... That's all we're going to do. We're going to flip it back on. I think it defaults to the MIG setting. I'm not going to zoom in and show you because I'll forget to zoom back out. I'll just tell you. It defaults to... No, it defaults to what you had it set on last. So it's back on, it's back on MMA or stick welding. So I'm going to press the button once. And now we're back on MIG 0.8 millimeter. That's the wire size. Zero, 0 0.8. Doesn't, and we're back to, and that's the same as 030 for us in America. And the light over here says SIN MIG. I'm not sure what the SIN is, but no, I don't care. So let's weld some of these holes up and see, see how we do. And I'm going to turn the heat all the way down. I'm going to turn it as low as it'll go, because this is thin shit. You know what? Let's try it without the backer first. I used to be good at this with a regular MIG gun. 
but I think solid wire did it, it was easier. But let's try it. What's the worst that can happen? Okay, I didn't have the best angle on that because I was trying to stay where it would be in camera. Let's, um, and of course it's slow because I kept having to wait for it to cool. And I didn't wait long enough a couple of times. But that is one hole welded up. Let's try it with the copper block. I think I've almost got a little bit too much wire. I think I could add a little heat into that, but um, it may have been just the angle I was going at it. Let's try it with the block. I hope that's done because that block got a little hard to hold. The copper block serves two purposes. One, it absorbs a lot of the heat and keeps it from burning through. Second, it keeps the wire from going through so you don't have to constantly position around trying to hit the edge of the hole. So it does make it a lot easier. And I'm also, see if I can hold the copper block, nothing really sticks to the copper block. You can take your wire brush and brush it and other than some discoloring it looks as good as it did when it started and they actually they actually make these for welders that have handles on them different sizes and different shapes you know triangular ones with handles on them and makes the gap filling and the hole filling a lot easier so yeah you can see how much better that was I have a lot a lot quicker and a lot less to grind off Okay, since I do not have an argon bottle or a, a, um, any TIG, TIG rods, you know, any tungsten rods for the TIG, I cannot test the TIG. I am not going to go out, sorry guys, but I am not going to go out and buy an argon or a helium or a trimix bottle or whatever I would have to get. It's been a long time since I've done any TIG welding. Now, I was a good TIG welder because I was a good gas welder. and gas welding and TIG welding, the techniques are a lot alike. So I'm not going to be able to test the TIG functionality on it. Sorry, I'd like to be able to, but that's not going to happen. 
But um, let me clean up a little bit and I'll come back with some final thoughts about this thing. Okay, so I took the side cover off because, well, <laughs> that's what I do and I wanted to see what was in it. And um, so for those of you who are interested what's inside of this thing, that's what it is. I was mainly looking for a way to control gas flow. And um, I'm not seeing it because I don't think there is any way this machine controls gas flow. I think if you want something like that, you're going to have to buy a higher end machine. I think the way you control gas flow in this, and you can see it on the MIG handle, or excuse me, on the TIG torch. So rather than try and explain it, I thought I'd just show you. This is the TIG torch that comes with it, and this is your gas valve right here. So before you start to weld, you turn the gas valve on. So you've got a bottle with a, a bottle with a regulator on it. This this outer cover does have a hose in it. You connect the other end of it to the bottle, and then before you weld, you just open it here. If you wanted to have a um, a, a MIG gun that required a gas flow, you'd either have to do the same thing, or you would somehow have to add your own your own control valve to it so the gas started to flow when you pulled the trigger. So here's something interesting. I yanked the um, I yanked the nozzle off the end and it just pulls on and off. And um, is it focusing? I can't see from where I'm at. And you'll see this torch does have the facility for gas. Those holes you see in there, that is for the gas to come through. And when I feel this, I can feel the gas hose. So there is a gas hose in there. Um, I don't know where it terminates. It stops about an inch before it goes into the machine. So a few things I'm discovering here as I familiarize myself with this and I try and use it a little bit. First and foremost, the manual, it's worthless. Don't even look at it. It's of no value whatsoever. It's not even about this machine. It's about the 220 machines and there's enough difference of them that it's, it's worthless. Another thing I noticed is there is no, um, there is no, um, settings suggestions or chart on this device. Um, you are pretty much on your own when it comes to adjusting it. And since since the front panel doesn't really match any more popular well-known welder, no charts from other welders are really going to help you on that. Also, if you want a stick weld, it's stupidly easy to do with this device. The MIG torch pretty much never comes out. That's why I think they put this slot in here, this hole in the front, so you can put the MIG torch back in the side if you're stick welding or, or TIG welding. So the stick welder, the stinger for the stick welder that you get with it, it just plugs into here and you can do, you can do um, DC straight polarity or DC reverse polarity. It just plugs in there and you set the setting here with this little button, the MMA. MMA and now manual something arc manual metallic arc probably that's what I used to call stick welding or the books I learned in called it SMA S-M-A-W so it's really easy to do swap those around if you want reverse and you're golden all right sorry but I am not going to get out back to weld the inner fender wells of the Jeep up today that's going to have to be another day it is cool overcast and drizzling out and it's getting late and while I have welded in the rain and the wet and puddles before I have no desire to re repeat that experience. So, what are my thoughts on the Vivor 130A flex core MIG stick welder TIG welder? Honestly, besides it, it's just such a cute little thing. Besides that, you know, if you have some experience welding and setting machines, this thing has an awful lot of capabilities for not a lot of money and for a tiny item. If you need another welder that you can you know, toss in your car to take to somebody's house or for welding out in the field where you have access to 110, 110 volts, this one's really good. I really, so far, in the short term, and I've only had it for a few days, I, am, I really find nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you're a brand new welder, unless you have a friend to help you or unless you're willing to do the research and the experiment requ experimentation required to get the machine set right, 
this might not be the best welder for you. You're not going to get a lot of hand holding from Vivor. You don't even get a, a settings chart to get you in the ballpark on how to set the machine. You get a manual that doesn't even apply to this particular machine and then quite frankly is, is the worst kind of chinglish imaginable. It's worthless. So for you, you might want to go down to Harbor Freight, get a coupon and get that, um, get that titanium 125. It's only about another 75 bucks more than this one. It's only a flux welder though. It won't do the other stuff, but it's, people seem to love it. I've never used one, but people do seem to love it. So you'll get a lot more hand holding with that and there's a lot more information on it on the on YouTube and the internet than there is of this. However, if you're one of those guys like me and you have a little bit of knowledge and you don't mind tinkering and for me I actually like it, this is a heck of a device for not a lot of money. And I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and hit notifications. And I should be back over the weekend and we'll get some more work done on the Jeep. Bye for now. I think I ought to be able to make something out of that.